Public Works and Utilities Committee, committee meeting of the North End of the City Council. Council, I'm Terry Desi Adams. All members are present. Also present in the gallery is Vice President Councilor O'Donnell. Um, is there any public comment? Well, um, could I speak later on the agenda, or would you prefer I speak now? Um, either is fine. Actually, why don't why don't we wait till the, the why don't we wait till the, that's okay? Of course, we'll have it next. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting? So which is, is, there, uh, is there any discussion on on that on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Here's unanimous. Now we'll move to items referred to committee. We have A16.026, petition from Northampton residents to accept Bottoms Road as a public way, which was referred to this committee on February 4th, uh, 2016. Councilor Boyd, do you want to? I don't, know, I, don't know, I know nothing about this measure. This is, um, you'll recall that uh, recently, um, actually predating Councilor Bidwell's introduction to the Northampton City Council, um, we, uh, the council was asked to accept Bottoms Road by petition. Uh, in first reading they accepted, in second reading they rejected and thereby failed. Um, what, but in the absence of some information that uh, subsequently came to light about um, the planning board and the DPW's uh, determination about the uh, about the viability of it functioning as a as a city street, and so a number of residents on Bottoms Road contacted me and asked um, if this could be revisited. So. What I had suggested was we have to, unfortunately for them, we have to start the whole process over again, which includes public hearings and review. Um, I attended the hearing, boy, when was that, a few days ago, again. 23rd. The, thank you. <laughs> at, at Bottoms Road, where uh, during the course of the hearing, the DPW presented the plans that they originally had for a turnaround that would allow um, access to the road that previously didn't exist for um, plowing and other maintenance for the street that had been proposed and negotiated with the residents there for, I guess, over the last three or four years I've been discussing this. Um, everyone on the road seemed to concur. I don't know, uh, after which the, the Public Works Commission uh, got together and voted later after that hearing, and I don't what was, Pam, do you know what their... Uh, they voted in favor of it. They voted in favor with one abstention, I think. So, um, uh, it's almost pro forma, but uh, the fact is, is I do think um, it, it's an appropriate reconsideration in that, um, uh, personally, I think all things being considered that maybe this one should probably make the mark. So, what do you mean? Um, the, uh, it, it seems to, at least the, at the time when this was originally done, it was the Board of Public Works that had considered that this was this would qualify, and it was their recommendation. And the Planning Board, I think, came up with a neutral recommendation originally, but thank you. Uh, Voted unanimously to recommend the City Council not. So this is this is their one the planning boards on February 25th. So this right. is a new recommendation with their reasons. This is their most recent one. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Hang on a second. Let me get it because this is only partially printed out here. So okay, maybe not as pro form as I thought. Anyway, so okay, the internet's not working. Me. The planning board voted unanimously to recommend the city council not something at a meeting last night, February 25th. The reasons were the road is a private driveway, not built to subdivision standards. If accepted, if accepted, boy, I'm missing important parts of this. Uh, here we go. Oh, it doesn't show up much better on this. Let me see if I can find it. The whole right side of the Carolyn's letter is missing. Yes, it is. Sorry. Yeah. 
in the original one, did the planning board, I thought the planning board had a neutral recommendation. No, they, they did not recommend it. They sent for the same conditions and... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, if I not recommend it, I know we have now have negative recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> neutral. This looks like an active no. <laughs> no. This looks like an active no as opposed to okay. a neutral recommendation, which was So planning said they disapprove this. Right. Thank you. As far as I can make out you know, with the portion of the I was the right half of it didn't make the cut. So, so, so just a review of the chronology here. So as of the new council, this the, the, the planning board met November 25th, voted down as a recommendation. Subsequently, there was this hearing earlier this, this week on the Public Works Commission. On the Public Works Commission. And they, they, said, they voted to recommend. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to see more about the criteria of that moment. It seems. And was the Public Works Commission fully aware of this? Recommendation of these objections where they did that? I would presume, but I don't know. Yeah. I, well, I, did, I wasn't at that in the yeah. for the, I, did come up in. I have to highlight that if we had the old structure where we were a conference committee with the board, with the, with the, with the yeah. now commission, this would be a much more robust conversation. We wouldn't have to guess at what they were thinking. Right. Yeah, I just want to point out, I'm still thinking we should do No, I don't disagree. And in fact, and I know that's not really in the scope, but I, I want to point it out. Yeah, and, and to that point, I mean, I, I actually, it's my hope and intent to negotiate with the mayor to actually enfold that group into this group. Right. That's, that's so what that, it Yeah, and, 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 and it, from my conversations with the mayor, he doesn't really have any objections to that. So I think that you should keep we can negotiate that, but for right now, and that's a good point, and I agree. But for right now, we have this pending. So. Um, okay. I got it. You ready? Okay. Yeah. So this is a this is a planning board voted unanimous unanimously to recommend that the city council not approve Bottoms Road as a street as a public street at its meeting last night. The reasons were the road is a private driveway not built to subdivision standards. If accepted. It would create public street frontage that, by definition, would allow further lot division without further review and approval by the planning board. Two, if accepted, it creates a backdoor mechanism for others to convert private, dri private driveways into public streets and would undermine the whole premise and regulatory structure established for creating safe, adequate public streets through the city's subdivision rules and regulations established in accordance with state statutes. Private driveways are significantly narrower, half to three quarters width of a street, can have steeper grades, don't require curbing nor sidewalks, don't provide utility infrastructure or drainage in many cases, and are built to serve a maximum of three house lots due to these parameters. Three, if the owners of the driveway desire the city to take over maintenance, they could themselves go through the process of creating an adequate street under the subdivision rules for the city and then petition the city for street acceptance. Four, as outlined in the petition moving forward, the city would be making minor upgrades to the driveway for minimal passage that are not consistent with the city's adopted regulations for building streets. Courts have been clear that when cities build streets, they need to be built in the same standards that the city requires of private developers in adopted regulations regarding subdivision and creation of streets. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, but they, this is sort of them rewriting history here. Yes. For Councilor Bidwell's edification, please. I'm, How we I'm got confused. in this mess? was somebody got in a pissing match on the Cape because the city was plowing what they thought was their neighbor's private driveway. And it went through the courts and the courts said, cities shall not provide maintenance to private ways. So Northampton went through and discovered that there was a laundry list of streets that they could not prove were ever accepted. Right. Bottom, this was one of them, Bottoms right. Road. So for a hundred years, the people on Bottoms Road lived on a city street. Until we went snooping, until we went snooping, and they bought and sold houses, and they were a public street. Until the city went back into the books and snooped around and said, "Shazam, we never accepted Bottoms Road." Now there were many other built to code streets that we hadn't accepted either. Half of Hillcrest Drive was never accepted. 
part of it was, part whatever. So it went through the process. So essentially, we went through, DPW and the council went through, and because of this loophole, decided who had been living on the street for like 100 years that we now had an opportunity to cast off, as it were, because it was more like a driveway than a street. So there are people there who've been living on the street for who knows how long, and now we have an opportunity to say, oh, it's really not a street anymore. And then the planners can opine, well, it's a backdoor around our hocus pocus regulations and condition setting and everything else they do. But it, it's not a, a back way around anything. For 100 years, they thought they were on a city street, and so did the city, until it actually snooped around because of this court case and determined that, oh, we can get rid of these guys, which is essentially what we're doing to all these people, is saying, we don't want to be bothered with what we thought was a street, now that we find out it's not, of our own omission, not knowing this. So we, you know, I, I would pretty much dismiss this as planner hocus pocus, because these poor people thought they lived on a city street. Then we discovered there was some arrangement with DPW that, well, it wasn't going to be a whole street, but they do part maintenance on part of the street. So this one is even more complicated. Okay. So this court ruling, I assume, didn't have any provision for grandfather. It was just, you know. No, no. It, well, but see, we it, that's up to us. That's right. We've been going mm-hmm. back, and DPW has been rendering opinions. If it if it looks like a street, smells like a street, walks like a street, will we take it as a street? But in the beginning, they had a pretty high bar. And a lot of people were upset. So then they went back and read. At the beginning of the process, they had one standard. By the end, the standard had gotten a little lower. So then they went back to the beginning again by the standard they had when they finished and let some more streets in. But all of these people thought they lived on public ways until we did this research. And to me, and I'll, the caveat is here, there's one I can't mention. Because family members own a house on probably the most notorious of these that everybody seems to want to get rid of. But even I owned a house. I own a house on the street that they took. Family members own one on the street that's the poster child for we don't want you anymore. But the same argument applies to all of them. So hopefully, if I don't mention the street, I don't get in trouble. But that was the process, you know, by this this court decision and the fact that we did the research, we threw out all these people who, for eons, thought they lived on public ways. So it really isn't a backdoor around. It's just the city. You know, essentially saying, okay, we overlooked the acceptance of your street, and maybe when they when it first came on board, it was perfectly fine, but now it doesn't hit current standards. I, I really don't think we can discriminate against it against the street. And they're my constituents on top of it. God bless them. If if it is indeed a back door access, that door was open wide already from the streets that we've already accepted. Um, uh, there are a number of streets that do not conform basically to the criteria that we currently have for subdivision development of streets um, that we did accept that don't, that they're not the right gauge, they don't have sidewalks, they don't have granite curbing, they don't have, you know, uh, the, the requisite curb cuts and things like that. But again, it was to, um, it was basically to reconcile uh, an historical problem, and then going forward, all future developments would have to abide by the conditions and standards because any new road or development street um, would have to conform to our current standards. Um, it's interesting seeing the language this emphatic in this, in this memo. It's a real disconnect from reality. This, yes, that's the one that, that <laughs> kind of caught me up short a little bit. I'm a little surprised at it, but I think that. Um, I think I think south sides are being covered with this memo, basically. In the event that, that something like this is challenged by someone who says who wants to convert their driveway to a uh, to a street that allows subdivision flat blocks to come off it, and I think that's a legitimate concern. Um, the the planning office gets to say, look, we told we cautioned, we told you about this, and we were concerned about that. So if, if I can ask a question, um, so. A number of other streets were, were accepted once the bar was lowered. Up there. Would are there any of those that were accepted where these objections would have applied, but they were accepted nonetheless? Yes. So yeah, why? Yeah. So what is it about this one that has caused it to be? This one. Keep, this is the nail sticking out in the deck. But I, I, but also I, I'm not so sure I agree with that. I mean, what other streets are so similar? I and mean, the council did agree to not take this as a public way. I mean, we're making it sound like it's a no-brainer that it should be a public way right now. Mm-hmm. The council decided. 
two votes that this should remain a, or this should be a private way. So the second vote, though. And, right, because the first time around. It passed once. Right, it passed the first. And I think you're the one that said it looked like a driveway to you. I was, was the one of yeah, yeah. on, on site visit that said that. I definitely was one of them. Yeah. yeah. So, so, if, so that's what I was also wondering. What, what changed the council's mind between first and second vote last time? What was the additional information? Well, there, there were a lot of. I'm sorry. No, but yeah, I, 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 there were, you know, out of all the street inventories, this is the one where we kind of dropped the ball. And part of the, and th th this is as much on me. As, as any of us, but I think the problem was there was a, an exhaustion factor. There was a discussion about this other unmentioned street that was kind of dominating the conversation. Um, and and I'm trying to remember the particular, this came up like this is one of the last items on the last streets to be reviewed. And um, uh, it was the last one to be reviewed, I think, with the exception of, well, I'm going to say Center Court was the other one. Um, and, and I, and Pam, yeah, Pam, you. I was just going to say that at the meeting where they had the second vote, that was also the night that we had the famous right. pin camera incident out on Main Street. And so no one from the DPW was here, although Ned was here earlier. Couldn't hold camera to it, <laughs> And the mayor was distracted. So those were two. I should, that's right, I forgot about that. We were completely flummoxed at that point. We were. There were a number of shiny objects that were distracting us. There were helicopters and bomb patrols, and the entire city was evacuating protected, with the exception of Council Chambers. <laughs> we, were <working laughs> we, we stuck it out. We were in the blast range, theoretically, <laughs> but but that's not an excuse. That well, but but, that, but I think Ned would have you know argued in favor of the street because the right. DPW at that point had. Indicated that they wanted it as The DPW and the BPW were both surprised that it failed in second. Mm -hmm. And the DPW and the commission now are now both, all recommending are both recommend are reiterating the recommendation. Uh, this this is this is the only dissenting view on the planning board. Exactly. Well, significant dissenting view, by the way. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. kind of just approaching a cold, you know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But Ooh. these are these are Pretty, pretty strong argument, but, but the defining factor for me is that this was a street in everybody's opinion for like a hundred years. You know, I don't see how this is an end around. I mean, if 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 somebody treated your driveway as a street for a hundred years, and then because of a court decision did some research and said, oh, it's not really, that's very different than you're putting in a driveway and then wanting to accept it as a right. street. You know, it, historical precedence precedes the combined age of everybody in the planning department. I think it's, you know, I can understand they're not wanting to open the door to this, but it would be a pretty high bar to open the door to have had the city treat your street as a street for 100 years and then have a loophole and change its mind. I mean, I mean you could say that with any street. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that ultimately, was, that ultimately was, was public for a long time, became private. There were a whole bunch that were public for a long time, became, became private. And, on a site on site visits to both, I would be really confused as to how the council would say center court should not be a public way, but Bottoms Road should. And you know, I'm sure you know, smart minds can make you know some really complex and convoluted arguments, but I think on looking at the street and the, and the nature of them and their proximity to other streets and what kind of streets they're in proximity to, to me, it's really not you know, it's 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 it's, 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 it's uh, confusing and, and mind boggling. Well, the also, historically, the planning board actually had already dealt with the issue of subdivision of flat plots off this property. There was one development that built to the right of Bottoms Road that wanted access from Bottoms Road. And as from what I understand, the planning wouldn't let them access off Bottoms Road. Um, they had to, they basically compelled the developers, the owners, to build a separate driveway, which is a separate turf cut just down further down Clement Street. Um, and there was much consternation relative to that in the neighborhood street. Yeah. Well, I think, frankly, there are houses on Bottoms Road that were built like in the 80s. I mean, it was... Well, the most recent one, the one yeah. where the turnaround would occur, uh, Harry Brickman's house was built later, and that it is acknowledged by one and all that that is the driveway that comes off the end of Bottom. Bottoms Road. That is the driveway. That's where the turnaround would happen. So all... Uh, past that point would all, be the driveway. All, yeah, all the houses up to that point would be serviced by, would be access serviced by 
bottoms road and with the turnaround would allow plows to turn around. Um, it is not a two lane road. It is actually, for all intents and purposes right now, a dirt road. Um, the city has been made over the winter, continued to maintain services, but um, there were, as we all know, there wasn't much plowing called for it during this winter. Um, but it was the mayor that agreed that, that they would continue and also deal with any catastrophic failures like washouts and things like that if that were to occur. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's all, that's all the, But how old is her house? Her house is what, 80s or 90s? Yeah, I think it's 80s. Yeah. So it isn't like these are all houses that have been there for a long time. In modern times, there are modern buildings that built on they built off of the reliance. They, 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 was they got a building permit based right. on the fact that it was a city street was as late as the 80s or 90s. Okay. Yeah. That, that's an important fact. Yeah. yeah. The planning okay. board authorized the development of some of those houses uh, with, with the understanding that it was a city street. Okay. The residents argument um, is that this is uh, this discounting as the city street is uh, de facto eminent domain seizure of property or property value um, that that they uh, they purchase their homes in some cases with the understanding that they are, their property's value was uh, uh, tied linked mm -hmm. with the fact that they have a city street um, I, don't, I don't know where that case goes I don't know if that happens but that's one of the things that, that they certainly are, are concerned with that their property value is diminished and they are significantly okay. by the I mean, but I also have to point out that's any any, any person on uh, any street that that we, we decided will now be private can make that exact same argument. So maybe it may be more it may be more valuable to hear the arguments that are unique. <coughs> well, the, the, the ones street. the ones that we did. I'm trying to think. Uh, the ones that were rejected. There was of the ones that were rejected. The only one with any major. That contested it was Senate Court, um, uh, arguing that they were qualified as a city street. The others were fairly cut and dry. Not nothing's cut and dry, but the fact is, is there was not much resistance put up by uh, the, the the neighbors who um, who lived on some of these that didn't didn't make the cut. Um, Bottoms Road and Senate Court being the exception, the two exceptions. Okay. So how many, when all is said and done, 67. It, but it was only a handful that didn't get taken, correct? Right. You know, so literally we went through 60 some odd streets and a handful of them didn't get accepted. You know, and my position on it has been when you've got that few, I mean, I know the, uh, the arguments are, well, the city will save money by not having to maintain them, uh, whatever the reason is why we would cut these people off. Um, there are so few of them when all was said and done, it seems like a lot of anguish for a limited number of people that something the size of the city couldn't say, you know, it isn't a black hole, it's five or six streets, and they're very small, most of them. The hell with it, let's just deal with it, because we honestly thought for a very long time they were. There's so few of them, I, I really don't see what's gained by cutting the rest of them off, even the unnamed one that I can't speak to. Well, the two, <laughs> of the two, the unspeakable one, Center Court <laughs> and Bottoms Road. Uh, Center Court came with an active no recommendation from Planning Board and from the BPW. Bottoms Road came with what appeared to be a neutral recommendation from the Planning Board and a positive recommendation from uh, the Board of Public Works. So there is that distinction to be made. Yep. Okay. So the vote on this um, November fifth was two yes, six no, one absent. That was the second vote. Or yeah, that was the second. Okay. And the uh, okay, yeah. I, and by the way, I was one of the no votes. I know Councilor Adams said that Councilor Donald. Yeah. Okay. I feel caught up to speak. You think so? Doesn't mean yes. I, I, I got it all. Yeah, yeah no, no, I think you got it as much as anybody at this okay. point. So, I mean, you, you understand that you've got kind of a, a rough encapsulation of something that we were 
vetting for over three years. So. Over over 60 streets we had. Yeah. Oh, we did them all, just some of them didn't make yeah. it. So I'll make a motion that we support accepting Bottoms Road as a street. I'll okay. second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed? Nay. Three ayes, one nay. Uh, motion carries. Next, we'll move to the ordinance pertaining to water resources, and here to present is Vice President Councilor O'Donnell. So my suit is caught in the, in the chair. Well, just bring the chair with you to the lectern. <laughs> so the universe is trying to prevent me from talking to you about this critical ordinance. So thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and Councilors. Um, just very briefly, uh, it's a pretty simple ordinance. It's one sentence. It seeks to make it unlawful for any future council or mayor to privatize our water system. Um, it's actually modeled after an ordinance that the city of Gloucester enacted in 2010. Uh, the city of Gloucester then subsequently added further protections to its city charter because, of course, an ordinance is just an ordinance that can be repealed at any time. And if you had a future council that wanted to do this, they would just repeal the ordinance. But I'll say at the outset, it's my hope that depending on uh, the reception for the idea that maybe the next time the charter review process rolls around, we could consider this idea for that as well. Um, basically, you've seen uh, strain budgets and mounting maintenance needs in various cities across the country lead to privatization of this public uh, resource and public service. And in many cases, I just don't think it's worked out very well. A good example is uh, Atlanta, Georgia, which privatizes water and subsequently switched back because they had <coughs> problems associated with it. Um, and one very uh, good example, I think, which is not because of privatization, but bears what I think the hallmarks of privatization would be, is Flint, Michigan, where you have a city whose water supply is poisoned by lead. I think as a direct result of emergency managers making a variety of decisions with zero public accountability and driven pretty much by the desire to save money without any concern for uh, public health or a broader community benefit um, or the well-being of the community. So this is my general, the, the general philosophy encapsulated by the ordinance is you see privatization of um, education these days, you see privatization of transportation in some cases, and you see privatization of, of uh, utilities and infrastructure. I just don't think people would like it very much if, if one day we had to debate water and sewer rates. Well, actually, uh, more accurately, uh, there was no body, uh, no legislative body debating water and sewer rates. It was completely up to whoever bought the water system. Um, and essentially, you felt about your water utility the way you feel about Comcast. Um, and again, the lack of public accountability and the lack of public concern that I think comes with corporatizing uh, these public resources. So that's the purpose of it. There's no imminent plan to privatize this kind of thing in Northampton at all. Uh, it's purely a kind of common sense idea that I think every local government should have. Just briefly, um, the right that Gloucester put in its charter, which is basically a right of referendum, if a city wants to privatize its water, there has to be a vote on it. Uh, last year in New Jersey, uh, Governor Christie signed a law that repealed what apparently was that right, which my understanding was all the localities in New Jersey had, which is a right of referendum before that could be done to kind of fast track that. So that's to say, I think this is something that serves every community, whether or not there's an imminent threat uh, or a problem. It's good policy. So thank you for considering. Thank you. Are there any questions for Councilor Yeah. The, so what you're asking is essentially a proactive um, dog ear of a page, as it were. To should should something like this come up that we, would, you know, you could see a reactive council trying to sort of scramble to develop legislation that might prevent something like this, or at least have more um, say in the matter of whether, or the community would have more say should should this occur. Whereas right now, if, if somebody wanted to uh, make an offer that was 
very appealing to uh, a mayor the, to offer privatized water systems with certain guarantees that the community wouldn't have much of a say. Is that I, yeah, I think that's a, a fair thing to say. That's certainly what Gloucester went through. They had someone knocking at their door, and there was kind of a grassroots scramble to put something on the books as a result of that. So you're right. We wouldn't want to be in that position. You want to have something uh, there in advance. And I think, you know, all the current focus we have as a council on water and sewer and our infrastructure shows that we actually have pretty good water infrastructure, which we should be proud of and we should, we should try to protect into the future. And finally, this is one of those things we have to think about, not the current members of the council, not the current mayor, but, you know, the, the process and, and what rules we want there to protect the city, no matter who is mayor. Can you, can you describe what happened in Atlanta? I just know vaguely about it. Atlanta got hung up several years ago as their water district of which went to the suburbs and exurbs or something like that. And that water was privatized and thereby there were, uh, the, there was some major constraint on the communities as a result of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I probably can't get into uh, timelines and that kind of historical information, but I think it pretty much follows the pattern you've seen in, um, in cities big and small, which is the city eventually realizes it has a lot of deferred maintenance to take care of, but it has no money to do so. Um, and uh, a company, I forgot which company actually was the one that, that stepped in in Atlanta. I can find that out for you if you want, or I can bring it to the council. Um, but a company steps in and can do it at less cost because private companies don't have to carry the same cost that, that, uh, that government does. They do it, and then after a while, because of cutting corners, you have problems emerge in terms of water quality and, um, and that kind of thing. And then there's the kind of inevitable counter cycle of people complaining. And eventually, I think what happens in many cases, I don't know exactly how it was resolved in Atlanta, but I mean, cities buy back their infrastructure from the company they sold it to. Um, and I think it essentially followed that pattern. Uh, you know, I don't think it was any extreme example of massive poisoning of the city or something, but um, you have this removal of something that the public were, were used to having um, that they no longer have a say over, and I think that inevitably causes friction. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When, uh, when, when this came up and it was uh, uh, positive recommendation, I think, from all of us at the Free Resources last week. Um, I, I, I thought it was a great idea. Um, I like the idea of calling attention to uh, this piece of our infrastructure that is extremely well run and produces great water. And I like the proactive nature getting out in front of it and saying, hey, this is a valuable piece of public infrastructure. Don't even think about privatizing. I'm, I'm very supportive of it. I move a positive recommendation. Second. Is further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Pierce Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda went for a little bit of Here we go. Is there a new business? No. No. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. Thank you. It was Suez, actually.